Bargain bag is here again. The bags are full of discs again. Gonna open them like this again. Bargain bag is here again. Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, Bargain Bag is here again. It is my monthly hunt for buried audio treasures in the form of two, count them, two mystery CD grab bags, seven, count them, seven CDs each from the late Skips Records and CD World. Uh, in between the two bags, I will talk about an al album or on CD that you might find or that I have found in the bargain section of a retailer near you. Anybody who sells music, you're liable to find some CDs for rock bottom prices. I know I have. But anyway, before all of that, uh, I go through and break down the last month's pair of bargain bags to tell you what was worth keeping and what, what wasn't. And i uh, got to tell you, this past month was a pretty good haul, I have to say. Uh, if, if this happens to be the final year of bargain bag, which it is looking that way, sad, sad face, uh, then it is going, on, going out, at least certain months of it are going out with a bang. Let's put it that way. So yes, without further ado, in rough order from castoffs to keepers, let's break down what I found in last month's pair of bargain bags. Uh, the first two CDs starting off here are both Christian CDs, and uh, those of you who watched me long enough know um, of my relationship with Christian music. Uh, we don't really get along. Uh, it's not that I think it's stupid or terrible or corny or whatever. It's just the lyrical content is lost on me. You know, not being a person of active faith, I guess you'd say, you know, I just, I just don't get anything out of the lyrics. And this first one, uh, not only was it a Christian album, but it was also a bluegrass album. And, uh, you know, it was live recorded, which, you know, made it a little bit more fun, although they did have, uh, the band leader had kind of uh, mini sermons in between each of the songs, so that was a little bit more of a, a turnoff. Uh, so, you know, this is obviously made for people who are very, very Christian. And uh, I mentioned bluegrass as, uh, I, I don't want to make that sound like it was a uh, detraction from it because I don't hate bluegrass music I just have to be in a certain mood to listen to it so uh, and and yeah this was very much bluegrass and very much Christian so yes uh, two two strikes against it well I guess the bluegrass thing is a semi strike but uh, yeah just did not care for it and frankly I got like three songs into it and that was enough for me with the little mini sermons as I said and uh, this other one was a little bit more pleasing but still uh, just didn't get really get anything out of it uh, it is uh, Chris Rice with his album Deep Enough to Dream. Uh, very pretty title. And the music is nice. It's uh, semi-acoustic, uh, but the lyrics are Christian, so they the lyrics are just kind of lost on me. But, uh, but as I said, the music, the compositions, the melodies and stuff, and the instrumentation are pretty nice. So, But I will not be keeping the CD. So, uh. And then next we have one that actually appeared in a previous bargain bag. I don't think it was this year. I think it was last year. But Julia Darling is her name, and indie folk pop rock is basically what it is. And it was not memorable back then, and even now I'm having trouble remembering any of the songs on here. So, yeah, it's kind of no wonder that I got rid of it the last time it, it came around as well. And uh, this next one I was kind of hoping I might like, but I ended up uh, it ended up being just a little bit too boring. The album Summer by George Winston. This is uh, instrumental New Age music is basically what the, the genre classification it is. But just a very nice acoustic instrumentation. Uh, so very nice for relaxing and that kind of thing, but uh, didn't really strike enough of a chord with me. <laughs> music fun. So yeah, just not really my thing, gotta say. Then we have Pastiche, which was a girl group, uh, or a, a group of female artists, and this was this was kind of just basically in the folk genre. You know, nothing really memorable about, about that either. So yeah. Uh, then we have Cerrito, an artist named Cerrito, and uh, as might suggest by his name, he is Latino, and the songs are uh, many of the songs in here are bilingual, Eng English and Spanish. So those of you who like Spanish language music might like this one. But yes, uh, country folk is basically the genre's lines that this guy straddles. Not bad stuff, uh, gotta say. Uh, I don't like it enough that I'm going to keep it, but uh, one of the standouts for me uh, it was actually uh, one of the cover songs, so it was not a song by Cerrito himself. But he covers the song Come a Little Bit Closer, which was originally done by Jay and the Americans. Very good rendition of that. So, uh, But yeah, not bad stuff. So if you like, as I said, uh, bilingual stuff, you might like Cerrito. And we have one that I kind of liked, but not enough to keep, obviously. Lisa Serbone is her name, and this was the album Close Your Eyes. But yes, uh, Jangle Pop Rock, uh, those of you who are familiar with uh, late 80s, early 90s music um, might remember, remember a group called The Sundays. 
they were fronted by, uh, or at least the, the vocalist was a woman, and they did very much the jangle pop folk kind of thing. Very good stuff I have. I think I have all three of their albums. This group reminds me of that sound, except Lisa's voice is a little bit too high-pitched and a little bit too breathy for my liking. So that just kind of turned me off on it. So, uh, or, you know, at least enough, enough to know that it, this is not going to be a keeper for me. So sad to say, I kind of was hoping I would like that. This one was really a borderline. I almost decided to keep this, but uh, it's, it's, it's very, very scratched up. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it played, actually, uh, without any skips. But uh, yes, um, Simple Minds, and with their album Real Life, it's actually the first full album by the Simple Minds that I've listened to. And yes, ironic that, you know, I can say that being an 80s kid, you know, the Simple Minds had that huge hit in the 80s, uh, Don't You Forget About Me. But yeah, I never listened to a full album, but I like this stuff. And uh, I'm, I was thinking about keeping this as a placeholder until I get a better conditioned copy of it, but I think I'll just, I'll just get rid of it and kind of keep them on my mental um, shopping list. But yeah, good stuff. Uh, Stand By Love was probably one of the standout tracks on this album, so yeah. Good stuff, and I do. It's making me want to check out uh, Simple Minds in a little bit more detail. So, yeah, band that I unfortunately criminally overlooked from the 80s. There's probably several of them out there that I overlooked because I was not very much into music at that point. So, uh, anyway, moving on. I actually have, I believe, all six of these next CDs are going to be keepers. So, yes, to have six keepers in a single month of bargain bag, uh, like I said, you know, this was a, a month that's you know, a strong month for, for bargain bag. First up here is the Pernis Brothers. Uh, I had heard of these guys, but I'd never listened to them. Very nice indie rock. Good stuff here. And this was either their first or their second uh, studio album. But yeah, very, very good stuff. Uh, they, they remind me a little bit of the Connells, which was a an indie rock band. So, but yeah, these guys are pretty good. And I'm very much uh, thinking about uh, checking out their other stuff. And then we have a group that actually turned out uh, upon uh, inspection on Wikipedia. This is actually a super group. Uh, D-A-R-K, or I don't know if they pronounce it, Dark. But yes, uh, the vocalist is Dolores O'Riordan from the Cranberries, and the bassist is Andy Rourke from the Smiths. So yeah, some some big uh, names of you know parent groups that these uh, that this group came from. And this album was released in 2016. But as you can see on the cover, they're following COVID protocols, face masks. Anyway, yay COVID jokes. Hey, if you don't laugh, you're gonna cry, right? Anyway, good stuff on here. Kind of uh, indie blended with electronica, sort of. It is kind of. Uh, a blend of the Smiths and the Cranberries in a way. So yeah, very good stuff. I'm going to keep this and spin it uh, several more times to uh, see how much it grows on me. And then we have Strunz and Farah. This was a, a New Age or um, a world music group. This actually is their first album I found out on Wikipedia. Uh, Mosaico is the name of it. Good stuff. Um, I, I like it enough to keep it and I might seek out their, their uh, subsequent albums. But yes, um, as the title suggests, Mosaico, this is a Latin-inspired world music album. Much of the music is focused on Latin rhythms and stuff. So yeah, very good for relaxation and that kind of thing. And then um, somehow I ended up getting two albums by this same artist, one in each bar uh, bargain bag that I opened up. I happened to pick two bags for last month, both of which had one album by the same artist in them. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, uh, as you probably know who I'm talking about by now, it is Desri. Uh, this is her first album, I Ain't Movin', and her sophomore album, Supernatural. I really enjoyed both of these. Uh, Desiree's biggest hit uh, back in the 90s, yeah, mid-90s, was You Gotta Be, and that is uh, the, a song on her album, I Ain't Movin'. Very good stuff, and the whole rest of um, both of these albums pretty much kind of follows that same mood. The first album, I Ain't Movin', is a little bit more, has a little bit more acoustic instrumentation, whereas supernatural and which and kind of suggested by the uh design on the cover art goes a little bit more into r b territory so but yes an excellent artist and i am thinking about checking out her uh subsequent album so yes very very good stuff uh yes uh, one of the biggest scores from the bargain bags this month uh, but as i say it's rough order from cast offs to keepers but one of my favorites was a big surprise and that is an artist by the name of lazoo uh, this is their album, Zooforia. This was really a lot of fun. It was funky, soul-inflected jazz rock, is basically what it is, it's the, the note that I put on here. Uh, and about half of it is instrumental and half of it is vocal. And they, they even throw some rap in on some of the tracks. So this the genre is all over the place on this album, and it's just fantastic. One of the, one of the song titles, I honestly can't remember what this song sounds like, but one of the song titles that caught my eye was Wilbur's Heinous Ruckus. 
yeah, and, and they do have a bit of a, a bit of a playful spirit, as you can kind of tell by the uh, uh, some by the some of the song titles on here. So, yeah, if you happen upon Lazu somewhere, uh, check them out. And actually, I think they were a local band, if I remember the line notes correctly, uh, in Eugene, Oregon. So yes, local talent here in Lazu. So I was very impressed by these guys, and I'm kind of sorry that I missed them. Uh, yes, this album was from 1997. So yes, they've probably split up and gone their separate ways by now. But uh, yes, a very, very fun and enjoyable album, I gotta say. Okay, now let's get on to the fun part. It's, for me, it's the fun part. Opening the first of the two mystery CD grab bags. And here we go. Lopping off the top. Lopping off the top and off. <laughs> anyway, gay rhymes. Uh, give you guys the customary peek before I get to see any of the CDs. And let's see here. We got figure out where the CDs are, how the CDs are oriented so I can show them at the camera. Coming up first disc here is Christopher Williams, One Man Service Station. This is, yeah, I, I have no idea what this is. Never heard of, heard of this guy. So, as is sometimes quite often the case with mystery CD grab bags. Is, yeah, you don't know what's in them. And we have oh, Super Chick. Last one picked is the name of the album. Yeah, I've. Why do they sound familiar? Did I have a Super Chick album in one of my early bargain mags? I may have. Yes, they kind of look like. I don't know. For some reason, the first vibe that I get from this picture is no doubt. Something maybe kind of like no doubt. I have no doubt. I will be surprised what they sound like. And we have Sunday Morning Classics, a classical compilation. So. Classical compilations are kind of meh, uh, much more often than not. So I probably won't end up keeping that. I've got, I've got all the classical music I really, really want to have, at least for now. And oh, classic Elton John, a little a ten track Elton John compilation. I had owned this at one time back when I was first getting into Elton John. Uh, Take me to the pilot, burn down the mission, friends. Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting, Mad Men Across the Water, Tiny Dancer, Honky Cat, Crocodile Rock, Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatters, and Leave On. I just gave you the entire track listing. So. Then we have Shelley James. It's So All Right is the name of the album. Oh, this looks like a Christian, yes, it's a Christian CD. Psalm Song. Yay, alliteration. Yeah. It's it's a Christian CD, I can tell by the song. So... I probably won't get much out of that, but yeah, who knows. And we have, oh, Celine Dion, her album Falling Into You. I've thought about getting into, or, or at least checking out Celine Dion. I checked out one of her compilations once. I, I bought it, and it was okay, I thought, at the time, and eventually got rid of it. So, earnest opportunity to, to check out Celine Dion in a full album. And then, the last CD in this package, Delta Moon. And uh, Howlin' is the name of the album. So, again, uh, another one that I have absolutely no idea who they are or what they sound like. So that's it for bargain bag number one this month. And now it's time for our bargain bag spotlight CD for the month of June 2021. Can't believe it's June already. Uh, but yes, this is a group that um, I have been a fan of for 30 plus years. I, I love them to pieces. And I've never really concentrated or, or given a real spotlight on them. I've mentioned them a few times in passing on my channel, but I've never really talked about them in, in any kind of depth at all. Uh, so I figured with Bargain Bag uh, winding down this year, uh, I figure I might as well give them a spotlight CD because I have uh, from time to time seen their CDs in the bargain section. I've already got them myself, so I don't really have a reason to buy them. But I have seen them in the bargain section, so they qualify as a bargain uh, a bargain spotlight CD. So let's talk about the Rippingtons. They are my favorite contemporary jazz group of all time. And this is their third album, Tourist in Paradise. It was released in 1989. And the Rippingtons are what's called a contemporary jazz group. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as fusion jazz or smooth jazz. And uh, I have my gripes about both of those labels. Fusion more strictly refers to the earlier practitioners of this type of music from the late 60s through the 70s. Uh, these guys didn't start until the mid 80s. And I've never cared for the term smooth jazz, frankly. Uh, not only because it's gotten a bit of a derogatory connotation lately, uh, you know, people kind of look down on anything that's classified as smooth jazz, 
but also because it doesn't really apply to the Rippingtons, uh, since a lot of their stuff is much more upbeat and energetic than the term smooth jazz would imply. I'd say half of their stuff is very upbeat and almost rock in nature. Uh, now, for the most part, the Rippingtons brand of contemporary jazz follows the verse-chorus, verse-chorus, bridge-chorus structure of popular music, and many other groups like the Rippingtons follow that formula, Spyro Gyra, the Yellow Jackets, etc. Uh, so essentially, this kind of smooth or this kind of uh, contemporary jazz is pop rock songs without lyrics. Now, I can't remember if this was the very first Rippingtons album I picked up or not, but it was released right around the time that my interest in instrumental music, contemporary jazz, new age, that kind of stuff, was getting to its peak. Uh, now, I, st I stopped following the Rippingtons, full disclosure here, around the year 2000, uh, mainly because my interests in music were heading in different directions, but also because, frankly, the stuff that they were starting to put out at the around that time was not nearly as interesting as their previous albums. Uh, but I did eventually regain interest in them, and now I have all of their albums. Yes, they've released, I believe it's 20 studio albums, two live albums, and a compilation. And I have all of them. So if you if you have any doubt that I'm a Rippingtons fan, that should erase that doubt. But uh, anyway, uh, the frontman and primary composer of the band is guitarist Russ Freeman, uh, who is an expert at just about any kind of guitar out there. Uh, acoustic, electric, and just about any genre that the guitar could possibly play. Latin, folk rock, you name it. And uh, he's also very proficient on keyboards and synth synthesizers, and you hear a lot of both of those instruments on this album. Now, I mentioned a minute ago how the Rippingtons have a bit of a penchant for the more upbeat songs. Well, the title track, Tourist in Paradise, starts off the album with a whole lot of energy, and it's also a highlight for the scat-like vocal accompaniment of the late Carl Anderson. Uh, yeah, not a lot of Rippington songs have vocals. In fact, there was just a little period in the middle of their discography where, like, one song on each album had vocals in it. And, I mean, we're talking maybe five songs total out of their entire discography. Uh, but I mean, this one kind of blurs the line. It doesn't have actual vocals, actual words. It's just uh, Carl Anderson just kind of sings back up to the instrumentation. It's just great. It's a, a real highlight for the album. Uh, Earthbound and Destiny are two other up-tempo tracks that are just great, and all three of these songs have some killer electric guitar riffs by Russ Freeman that give the songs a real rock feel. Now, one thing about this album, and most of the Rippingtons' earlier discography in general, I suppose, is that the song titles mostly tell you what you're going to get from song to song. So if you're looking for curveballs in that regard, you're going to have to look somewhere else. Uh, for instance, uh, there's a song on here called Aruba, and that has a real festive Caribbean feel to it. And the closing track, The Princess, has an almost fairy tale quality to it. And there's also another song on here called One Summer Night in Brazil, which, which incidentally is the longest song on here. It's six and a half minutes long. Uh, and that has a very Brazilian, almost almost a bossa nova feel to it, uh, except that it's, uh, the beat is not quite as strong enough to make it a bossa nova song. Uh, except, that is, for about a 45 or 60 second uh, segment in at the midpoint where it picks up tempo and gives it some variety for interest. So yeah, that makes it a, a very interesting song. It, it, yeah, it's six and a half minutes long, but it does not wear out its welcome. It's still very interesting to listen to. And there's also a reggae flavor track on here called One Ocean Way. So as you can see, there's a lot of variety on this album, honestly, from almost rock instrumental songs to the sweet and tender ballads and a few ethnically inspired tracks also. Uh, one of the things that probably made the Rippingtons appeal to me so much is that they have uh, such a variety of songs f uh, within each album and uh, from album to album. And uh, one more highlight that I want to point out on this album is that they include an instrumental cover of the Al Green classic, Let's Stay Together. So, And funny story, uh, this was, at least as far as I know, my first exposure to that song. Now remember, this was like 1989, and uh, I wouldn't realize for several years after I bought this album that it was a cover. I, for, yeah, for, for all that time, I thought it was a Rippington's original. So, and, and that's something that they do on almost all of their albums, actually at least uh, to an extent. The later albums, they don't really do that. But on several of their albums, they put a cover on each album. So yeah, not knowing for five years, probably about five years, that this was a cover, uh, kind of is a, a nod to my more musically ignorant younger self, I guess you'd say. So, uh, you know, when I finally discovered the Al Green song, in so doing, I realized how the Rippingtons made, put their own stamp on their cover of the song. They, they played with the melody a little bit, gave it some interest, so it wouldn't be quite as boring as, you know, the, uh, as a strictly instrumental rendition of that song 
would probably be otherwise. They kind of put their own stamp on it, as they did with most of the covers that they did on their albums. So, yes, uh, it's kind of a testament to the Rippington's talent and Russ Freeman's talent that they have gone for 40 years, almost 40 years, and are still recording today. So, But yes, anyway, this is a very enjoyable album from one of my all-time favorite groups. Uh, if you ever see really any of their albums, especially their pre-2000s ones, those are their best, pick it up. I would recommend doing so, even if just to try them out, just out of curiosity. Uh, contemporary jazz may not be for everyone, I realize that, uh, especially for those who like sinking their teeth or their mind, as it were, into lyrics, since these songs almost never have any lyrics. But yes, very, very fun album from a great band that uh, I have enjoyed for, as I said, for decades. So yeah. And now, before I keep gushing about the Rippingtons, let's rip open the final bargain bag for this month. That was a good segue. I just thought of that off the top of my head. It's, it's one of my good days mentally. Anyway, chop, chop off the bag here. Hopefully without chopping off any fingers. And uh, peekaboo at the CDs. I, I, I like pausing the video when I'm editing just to see if, uh, you know, what's hiding in there and that I, stuff that I might not realize is hiding in there and stuff. And I'm rambling, so let's just dig into the bag. Let's, what do we have? Land Speed Records, Essential Underground Hip Hop. I will probably not uh, care for this CD. I will listen to it just to see what it's, what it's like, or I will at least listen to part of it. But I am not counting on really uh, keeping that CD. And we have 7L and Esoteric, Bars of Death. I'm kind of thinking, yes, it, it definitely looks like hip hop. Is this the hip-hop bag? We'll find out. Then we have Carrie Getz with her album Little Victory. Yes, it's a her, apparently. I'm kind of thinking singer-songwriter stuff. We'll find out. Then we have 50 Sweet Bands, 50 Sweet Songs. Uh, so I'm not recognizing any of these. Uh, off the, oh, Tommy Dorsey. Yes. It is a compilation, obviously. So. One of, one of those old-timey compilations. Ye oldie compilation -y. Anyway. We have Alev, We Live in Paradise. Uh, he is not familiar to me at all. So, a lot of stuff in here that I have absolutely no idea what to say about because I don't recognize any of the artists. We have Thirst, their album Through the Wire. I can't read anything on the spine because it's dark letters on a dark background. Yay design. So yeah, I have no idea what this is going to be like. So, And then the final CD in this bag. <coughs> Excuse me. I did not mean to cough at you guys. I'm sorry. We have This Way, produced by David Kahn, who is, I've heard that name before. He's a pretty uh, reasonably popular producer, well-known producer. It's on Reprise Records. So I have no idea who these guys are. Or these ladies, I don't know if, you know, I, I, I have no idea who the gender of the band members, and I am babbling again. Oh, darn it, that's the curse with these bargain bag videos, is they seem to be over as quickly as they started. It's just so darn much fun doing them. But anyway, yes, that will do it for Bargain Bag for the month of June 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.